Hi there, later, a legendary queer ally in Ghana. But first, let's talk about the ride-sharing service that's been launched in Pakistan for transgender people. The hope is She Drives will be a safe alternative for those who are often harassed on public transport. Trans people are seen as outcasts in Pakistan, which is a mainly Muslim country. Hushbu lives there. She's transgender and tells DW it's hard. There are good and bad people. Most of them are bad. In crowds, people grope us or do nasty things. Someone will say, why are you doing this? We say to them, we're humans like you. The She Drive service is starting off in Lahore with a view to expanding to other Pakistani cities. If you're non-binary in Malta, you can now get legal recognition on your birth certificate. A new law's just come into effect, so the gender option X is included on official ID documentation. Malta's ranked the most progressive country in Europe for LGBTQ plus rights by the snappily titled International Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Trans and Intersex Association. Oh, I'm out of breath. And why has a heterosexual man dressed entirely in pink in the middle of a busy city in Ghana? It's because Texas Kadiri Morrow is a top-flight ally. Yes, he is. The activist has been protesting in Accra against plans for extra anti-queer laws in the West African nation, where gay sex is already illegal. He brought pro-LGBTQ plus banners with him and trumpet players. Hi there. Later, why Go Woke, Go Broke is a bit of a joke. But first, the inaugural Gender Liberation March has been held in America outside the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. More than a thousand people took part calling for transgender rights, the actors Elliot Page and Julio Torres among them. Across America, hundreds of anti-trans laws have either been passed or they're being proposed. Author and activist Raquel Willis is one of the organisers. She tells ABC News it's not a new thing to be trans. Our experiences are not something that just kind of fell out of the sky yesterday, as many folks have thought. We have elders, we have ancestors and transcestors who remind us that queer, trans and non-binary folks have always existed. The march was also pushing for abortion rights. Turns out the concept of go woke, go broke is a bit of a joke. This is a warning to brands to put them off being queer friendly, but new research says there's evidence it's good for business. Data has been collected from nearly 400 companies across 58 countries. It shows their inclusive ad campaigns have led to increased sales and profits and more customer loyalty. And Steve-O from Jackass says talking to a trans person has led him to change his mind about a comedy stunt he was planning. The star was going to get breast implants and also remove his tattoos and shave his body to trick men into flirting with him. But he ran this by a trans employee at his local supermarket who explained the difficulties of their life and now the plan's been scrapped. Hi there. Later, can Meta do better on anti-trans content? Let's start, though, with a lesbian witch. A gay education chief says this is how she was referred to by one of her now former colleagues. Rose Tagnesi is suing a school district in California for discrimination, reckons she was forced out of a job because of her sexuality and was advised to keep it secret for the good of her career. Rose has been speaking to ABC10 News San Diego. To have this happen to me after 30 years of all the work, it was so painful, it was so traumatic. I want justice and I want accountability, but most of all I want it to stop and I want there to be some awareness that it's happening. Rose's claims are being denied by the school district and as for being a witch, there's no evidence she owns a broomstick or cackles maniacally. Instagram owner Meta is accused of ignoring its own guidelines on anti-trans content. The LGBTQ plus advocacy group GLADS telling the organisation to enforce its policies on hate speech and bullying. Two cases are being reviewed by Meta's oversight board 
after multiple complaints about transphobic videos on Instagram and Facebook weren't acted on. And a monument to transgender lives opens today in London. It features plastic ass moulds of the faces of more than 700 trans, non-binary and gender non-conforming people. They're from Mexico and the UK, where murder rates for those gender identities have hit record highs. The sculpture is on the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square for the next two years. Hi there. Later, talk of even more red, white and royal blue. But first... Georgia in Europe has taken a look at Russia's harsh anti-queer laws and said, Hold my cha-cha. That's a Georgian brandy. You're welcome. Parliament there has just passed a family values bill. Amongst other things, it would outlaw gender reassignment surgery and same-sex marriage and adoption. Tamara Jakeli's director of Tbilisi Pride and tells Reuters it looks like the organization's finished. This law is the most terrible thing to happen to LGBT community in Georgia. Our main aim was always to be very outspoken and loud on LGBTQ issues. Every year we used to hold a Pride Week, Pride festivals. This law will make it legally impossible. The law still needs to be approved by the president. Queer representation in the media would also be illegal as would flying rainbow flags. LGBTQ plus voters in America overwhelmingly want Kamala Harris as president. About two-thirds say they prefer the Democratic Party candidate over Republican septuagenarian Donald Trump. This is coming from a survey by the Human Rights Campaign, Election Days, November 5th. And the sequel to queer rom-com Red, White and Royal Blues not even written yet, but Taylor Zaka Perez, one of the film's leads, says he'd love to see a third instalment and he's up for a Broadway musical, but only if it's funny. He's the son of a US president in the movie who falls for a British prince, played by Nicholas Galitzine, who is delightful. Hi there. Later, the first LGBTQ plus cinema in London. But first, the historic unsolved murders of dozens of queer people in Australia are going to be reviewed. An inquiry found they were never properly investigated because of police bigotry, so we can't know for sure which were hate crimes. The New South Wales government's made a formal apology and will implement all 19 recommendations of a report. My commitment as the police minister is to make sure that the New South Wales police do better, do better, because the LGBTQI plus community deserve that. Yasmin Catley there. It's possible more than 30 people in New South Wales were murdered for being queer between 1970 and 2010. One of the killers of Matthew Shepard, who was murdered for being gay back in 1998, will remain in prison in the US. Russell Henderson had applied for early release. He was given two life sentences for the kidnap and murder of 21-year-old Matthew, who was savagely beaten and left for dead in Wyoming. And plans have been approved for what's thought to be the first LGBTQ plus cinema in London. It's being named after Dorothy Arzner, a pioneering lesbian filmmaker, should open later this year in Bermondsey in South London. So that's good news if you fancy being taken up the Arzner. We're also on your smart speaker. Command it to play Pride Daily Podcast. I'm Kev McGraw. See you Monday.